Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining in and welcome to Eturica webinars. So team, the topic of today's discussion is Azure, unlocking the Azure app services for the seamless development. See the agenda of today's session is as follows. So here, when we talk about this today's session, we'll be looking at what exactly is this Azure app service and why do we use the Azure app service, the application service application type, that is the app service application type. And we will look into the app service plan demo and the pricing about it. So that's the agenda of today's session. Now let's proceed ahead and understand about the app service that we have got in Azure. Okay. So let's look into the same folks. Okay. So here, when we talk about this app service, okay. So the app service in Azure, See, the Azure App Service is actually a web-based service and this will help us in hosting the web application. Yeah, it will help us in hosting the web application, REST APIs and the mobile backend. So I can say this as a HTTP-based service, which will help us in host all these kind of applications. So you can develop in your favorite language, whether it can be .NET, whether it can be .NET Core, or whether it can be Java, Node.js, PHP, Python. You can develop in your own favorite language. And these applications will run and scale with ease on both Windows as well as the Linux-based environment. And here, this app service from Azure also adds the power of Microsoft Azure to your application, like the security, load balancing, auto scaling, automated management. Additionally, you can also take care and take the major advantage of DevOps capabilities like continuous deployment from Azure DevOps, GitHub, Docker Hub, and the other sources. And here, this would also include the package management, staging environment, custom domain, as well as the TLS SSL certificates. And here with the help of this app service, you will only pay for the Azure compute resources that you would use. The compute resources which you use are determined by the app service plan, which you would decide to run your applications on. Okay, so here, when we talk about this app service, as I mentioned, you can use your own language. So the major advantage that is highlighted is multiple language and framework. So it has got the first class support for ASP.NET, ASP.NET Core, Java, Ruby, Node.js, as I mentioned, PHP or Python. You can run PowerShell and other scripts or executables as the backend services. The main advantage, the other advantage is managed production environment. So this app service automatically patches and maintains the OS and the language frameworks for us. We can actually spend more time in writing the great application and we will let Azure to worry about the platform. And this app service supports containerization and Docker. So we can containerize our application, host a custom Windows or the Linux container in the app service, and we can run multi-container application with the Docker Compose, migrate the Docker skills directly onto the app service. And we have got the DevOps optimization. We can set up the continuous integration and the deployment with Azure DevOps, GitHub, Bitbucket, Docker Hub, or the Azure Container Registry. So you can promote updates through test and staging environment. You can manage your application in app service by using the Azure PowerShell or cross-platform command line interface. And with Azure, you get to have the global scale with high availability. So you can scale up or scale out manually, or even we can make use of the benefits of Azure and scale up or out automatically as well. So we can host our application anywhere in the Microsoft's global data center infrastructure. And we can like, with the help of this, obviously we can maintain the high availability of the application. And the other advantage is connections to SaaS platform and on-premise data. So you can choose from many hundreds of connectors for the enterprise system like SAP, SaaS services like Salesforce and internet services like Facebook. And you can access on-premise data using the hybrid connectors and the Azure virtual networks. And with app services, you get to have the security and compliance managed. So app services, ISO, SOC and PSI compliant. You can create IPA restrictions, and you can also manage service identities, prevent subdomain takeovers. And when it comes to authentication, you can authenticate users using the built-in authentication component. You can authenticate users using the Azure Active Directory, Facebook, Google, Twitter, or Microsoft account. 
and you can also make use of the application template so you can choose from an extensive list of application templates in the Azure marketplace like WordPress, Joomla and Drupal. And here it also has this ability of Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code integration. We have got the dedicated tools in Visual Studio and the Visual Studio Code Streamline, which is going to streamline the overall work of creation, deployment and debugging of the application. It supports API and mobile features. So the app service provides the turnkey core support for RESTful API scenarios and which is going to simplify the mobile app scenarios by enabling the authentication, offline data synchronization, push notification and many more. And lastly, it supports the serverless code. You can run a code snippet or run a script on demand. Okay, we can run a script on demand without having to explicitly provision or manage our own infrastructure. And here we only have to pay for the compute time that our code actually uses. So these are all some of the great advantages of using this Azure app service. So besides these Azure also offers other services which we can host the website and the web application. So that's the overall idea team. Now moving ahead, let's look into the Azure app services application types. So here when we talk about this, so the Azure app services, uh, it provides the web application like it can be we can host our Windows web application or we can use it for hosting the restful APIs. We can use it for logic apps and we can also use it for mobile apps as well. OK, depending on our use case on the usage, we can use it as per our requirement. We can use the environment and we can actually go ahead and and implement it and use it as per our requirement. Okay, and moving on the service plans. So let's have a look into the service plans that we have got. So when we look into the, so when we look into the app service plan, so here we basically have like, uh, this is the overall idea about this app service plan. Let me just give you some more information. So when we talk about this app service plan, so an app service always, actually runs in an app service plan. So in addition, the Azure functions also has the option of running in an app service plan. So when I talk about this app service plan, so the app service plan defines the set of compute resources for my web application in order to run. So when we create an app service plan in a certain region, like for example, West Europe, a set of compute resources is created for that plan in that region. So whatever the applications that you put into in that app service plan, it will run on those compute resources which are defined by your app service plan. So I can say that each app service plan is going to define the OS, that is the operating system, region, number of virtual machine instances, size of the virtual machine, pricing tier, and so on. So this is the overall idea about this app service plan. And here, yeah, so these are the various things that we can control. And like that's the overall idea about this Azure app services guys. Even if, if I talk about the pricing tier, okay, we have various pricing tier that we have got in Azure. Okay, we have got the shared compute, dedicated compute and the isolated. So if I talk about the shared compute, so it comes under free and shared. So they are basically the two basic tiers and it is going to run an application on the same Azure virtual machine as the other app service application, which would include the apps of other customers. And these tiers generally allocate the CPU quotas to each app, which runs on the shared resources and the resources cannot scale out. So these tiers are generally intended to be used only for development and the testing reasons. And when it comes to dedicated compute, the basic standard premium, premium V2 and premium V3 tiers run applications on the dedicated Azure virtual machines. So only apps in the same service, same app service plan share the same compute resources. The higher the tier, the more virtual machine instances are available for you to scale out. And we have got the isolated. So the isolated and isolated V2 tiers, they run dedicated Azure virtual machine on the dedicated Azure virtual network. So this actually provides the network isolation on top of the compute isolation for our application. So as a result of this, it provides the maximum scale out capabilities. So each tier provides a specific subset of app service features and these features would include the custom domain, 
TLS, SSL certificate, auto scaling, deployment slots, backups, traffic manager integration, and many more. So uh, as it's obvious, the higher the tier, the more features are generally available. So that's the overall idea about the pricing tier in Azure App Services. All right, team. Now, if, if you have got any questions on, on the topic that we have discussed today, especially to the introduction to Azure App Services, please feel free to let me know. Okay, now before I end the today's session, I'll just give you a quick demonstration of the same. So I'll give you a quick demonstration as uh, about how you can create a web app using the command line interface. So that's the quick demonstration that I'm going to give you right now. And here we'll be using the Azure app service. Okay, so we will log into the Azure portal. I'm going to create and configure the Azure resources. We'll run the Azure service deployment command on the Azure CLI. This is going to instantiate my Azure service, which will then go ahead and uh, proceed with that implementation. So let's go ahead and look into the same folks. So I'll just start by logging in first. So I'm now logging into my Microsoft Azure portal. So once I log into this Microsoft Azure portal, so I'm going to launch my Azure Cloud Shell. So I can launch the Azure Cloud Shell by clicking on this button. So this is going to launch my Azure Cloud Shell. Now here, we'll click on Bash. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'll click on this Show Advanced Settings and I'm going to do some changes. So I will ensure that the Cloud Shell region as Central India and I'll keep the remaining settings as it is. Okay, and I'll click on close. I'll be, I'm okay to use everything right here and I'll click on close. Okay, so let's do one thing. Let me just do it again. I think we'll have to modify a few things. So, okay, so here, Central India. So here, I think I just have to enter the file share name. So I'm going to mention as demo app service. Okay, and I'll also mention the storage account name and I'll click on this create storage. Okay, we'll have to wait for some time. So once it is loaded, okay. Okay, let's wait folks. So now it is under the status of creating. Okay, now it says requesting a cloud shell. It is succeeded. Currently it is connecting to terminal. Okay, then finally we'll get a message that says as welcome to Azure cloud shell. Okay, so we get the same. Next, what we need to do is we need to create the web application in the Azure. In order to create the web app in the Azure. Okay, so I'm going to run the command like this. I'll say az app service okay and i'll say create i'm going to create the app service plan and here i'll mention the name okay so i'll mention the app service plan name like for example i'm going to mention as demo plan one two three four five okay then i'll have to mention my resource group i'll say resource group okay and i'll mention the resource group which is associated with my account so i'll just mention the same right here so this is my resource group and I'll press the enter key. Okay, so this is what it's going to do. So like we'll wait for a few minutes. So this is going to instantiate the app service plan for me. Then we will run the another command. See, this has been completed. Now, once this is completed, we can then go ahead and create a web application in Azure. In order to create a web application in Azure, I can say AZ web app, create resource group, I'm going to specify the resource group which is associated with my account and I'll mention my plan and here we'll have to specify the app service plan which we had created earlier. In my case, the app service plan is demo plan one, two, three, four, five. That's the name that I had mentioned earlier and I'll mention my web app name. I'll say name demo app one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Okay, that's the app name that I'm going to mention and I'll press the enter key. So this is going to create a web application in Azure. So what happens is, okay, so it looks like, yeah, so there is a typo. So it is actually web app, not web OO. So this is going to create the app service plan as well as the web application for me. Now in the meantime, so once it, it, since it is being executed, I'm going to launch my app services right here in the new tab. Okay, so this is going to launch the app services for me. 
and here we will be able to see the app uh, that we have actually created let's wait for a few minutes so once it is created we should be able to see it here team okay so let's wait i'll refresh it let's wait yeah see i can see an app that is demo app one two three four five six seven one i can see my web app present now i can just click on my web application and what we can do is we can get to know its default url like this is the default domain i can copy this default domain and i can paste it over here and uh, we can see whether it is going to work or not currently i'm not going to get anything let's see if it alerts yeah okay that's great so it says your web app is running and it is waiting for your content which means we were able to deploy the web app using the azure app services and we have been able to test the deployment from our web browser and we can come back over here and we can look into the activity log to look into the activity logs that we have performed and we can also go ahead and create some visualization under dashboard to see as how exactly my application is actually working i can click on this monitoring and we can monitor the metrics related to our application all right team so that's how you can go ahead and get started and create your application so in, in this simple scenario i've created an app service plan and along with that i've also created an application under the app service plan and we were able to test it with the help of the application domain so with this we come to the end of today's session everyone and i look forward to seeing you on our next session so thank you so much everyone and i'll see you next time